This video will cover day-to-day -day use of Desk Manager Online. Please see our Getting Started in Desk Manager Online video, for configuring Desk Manager Online for the first time. Chapters break up the YouTube video into sections. You can skip to any section of the video by hovering your mouse over the timeline, clicking the name of the chapter, then clicking your desired chapter. Desk Manager has a wide range of display and interface customization options. Click the user icon in the top right, then click Display and Interface Settings. The Settings window will open. You may click and drag the Settings window to see different parts of the screen. There are four built-in themes. Colorful, which is the default. Bluesy. Oceanic. And Royal. You may also select the custom option to choose your own design from the options below. You have the option to adjust the size of labels, inputs, and the style of tabs. You can choose whether to show icons in the toolbar as well. You may choose how Desk Manager chooses its default filter, and what window to open the details page in. If the screen is not to your preference in size, you can make everything on the page bigger, by pressing Ctrl and Plus, on your keyboard. To make everything on the page smaller, press Ctrl and Minus. To reset the page zoom, press Ctrl and Zero. To navigate Desk Manager online, there are shortcuts to each section on the left sidebar. Click the three lines to expand the sidebar. To keep the sidebar expanded while navigating Desk Manager online, click the pin at the top. ePay is a prepaid credit balance that is deducted when using services such as printing ePay forms or pulling Nimbitus title status reports. Here you will be shown how to reload your balance. First navigate to Settings. Under the Organization section, click ePay Balance. This will show you your available balance. Click Add Funds to be taken to your Web Manager account portal. You must first log in. Next, enter your payment information. If you would like to save your credit card information for future use, give your card a nickname. When you are ready to proceed, click Submit Payment. To access additional settings, click Manage Saved Cards, Balance Alerts, and Auto Recharge Settings. First, you can manage your saved cards. Next, you may enable Balance Alerts to send an email when your ePay balance is below a specified amount, which can be chosen in the drop down menu. Auto Recharge is an optional feature that will automatically charge a specific amount to a saved card when your funds dip below a specified amount. Choose that amount, then choose the amount you would like the system to recharge your account when the balance goes below the first amount. The recharge amount has a range of $50 to $1,000. In this example, the card will be charged $200 when the ePay amount drops below $100. A primary card is required for auto recharge to work. Choose the card you would like to charge first. The secondary card will be used in the event the first card is unable to be charged. An email notification for a recharge will be sent to the email address entered in the field below the recharge amount. Next, we will cover adding inventory in Desk Manager. There are multiple ways to begin adding a new vehicle to your inventory. From the dashboard, click Inventory, then Add Vehicle. Or, from the Inventory page, click Add Vehicle in the top left. Enter the VIN, Mileage, and category of the vehicle. Then enter the date in, and if applicable, select a status and substatus. Click continue to add the vehicle to your inventory. Information relating to the vehicle will now be decoded from the VIN, and the details will populate in the appropriate fields. The 10th character in the 17 character VIN, highlighted green, represents the vehicle model year. This standard applies to vehicles built in, or after 1981. After clicking continue, you're taken to the Vehicle Details tab. 
Each tab allows you to enter and retain important details of the vehicle. The Options tab is populated automatically. The Values tab contains access to Kelly Blue Book and JD Power to value your vehicles. Please note that Kelly Blue Book or JD Power Book values are not safe to the log when they are changed. The History Report dropdowns allows you to run Nimvitus, Carfax, or Auto Check History Reports. The Photos tab is where you can add images of your vehicles. There are a few ways to upload photos. Select Browse in order to choose the photo to upload. You may also click and drag the files to upload them. After a photo is uploaded, you will have the option to preview the photo within Desk Manager. The Attachments tab can be used to hold important digital or scanned documents. As with photos, documents can be uploaded in the same ways. Please note that access to attachments is a user security option, which may be enabled or disabled. The Title DMV tab is used to track the title number, status and state register, along with the title and in and out date. The last tab is the Purchase Info tab. This is where you can enter in how much the vehicle was purchased for, along with where you got it, and a few options on how the dealership purchased the vehicle. Flooring and curtailment can be tracked as well. Following the purchase of the vehicle, you can enter in more detailed expenses in the costs. We will be covering costs more in depth momentarily. Tasks, notes, and communications logs are available in each vehicle or deal record. These will be used for inner office communications and note taking. Adding vehicle costs. Desk Manager tracks all vehicle costs not related to the purchase and flooring of the vehicle separately. While working inside any vehicle, you will find a costs option. Clicking on this will bring you to the list of vehicle costs recorded on this specific vehicle. If the vehicle purchase price or flooring information has been entered onto the vehicle, you will see the purchase cost in the list, as well as purchase and flooring information in the summary area below. Clicking on new cost will bring you to the vehicle expense details window. Begin by entering the amount. Next choose an expense category from the list. This is the date the expense was incurred. When using the paid to field, you can type in a vendor name for one time use or by clicking the three dots you can search for an existing vendor. You also have the option to enter a new vendor for current and future use. The payment method is used to track how the expense was made. Enter a due date if applicable. The due date will be sent to QuickBooks if you are using our QuickBooks integrations. Due dates are not required. Invoice and reference numbers can be entered as well where applicable. These fields are not required. These fields could be used for the check number, an electronic transaction ID slash reference number, or a credit card transaction ID. Feel free to record any notes regarding this expense in the notes area. Marking the Add to Vehicle Cost checkbox will cause the expense to be added to the vehicle's total cost. This box is marked by default. Unmarking this box allows you to record an expense that should be applied to the dealership as a whole. It does not specifically belong to this particular vehicle. When the Send to QuickBooks checkbox is marked, this item will be on the list of items to be sent to QuickBooks. If Send to QuickBooks is checked, this will create an accounts payable record. When finished, click Save to return to the vehicle expenses list. To edit an expense, click on the expense category of the item to be updated. Click the trash can icon to the right of any expense to delete that expense. The accounting history option will show all expenses belonging to a vehicle that are marked to be sent to QuickBooks and to the right will display the status depicting if the item was sent or is waiting to be sent. This area can also be used to send transactions to QuickBooks as well. Creating a deal starts from the inventory list. Find and select a vehicle in the inventory list to access its vehicle details page. From here, click New Deal. You'll be prompted to select the sale type, sale date, and apply a taxes and fees template. Although it's not necessary at this stage, you can also include the buyer 
buyer's address, and personal buyer details to track customer demographics. Once you've filled in the required information and any optional details, click Continue. You've just created a pending deal that is now accessible in your deals list. After creating a deal, or navigating to the deal in the deals list, you'll arrive at the main tab. The main tab is where you'll structure your deal, from the cash price and cash down, to interest rates and first payment dates. Enter the price and cash down. If there is a deferred payment, click the three dots and enter the amount, due date, and note. Then click save. If there are any accessories, click the three dots and enter the information for the accessory, then click save. If there is a trade, click the trade tab, then click add trade in. Enter the VIN, then click decode. Select the correct VIN style for this vehicle. If Kelly Blue Book or JD Power are set up to automatically pull information for new vehicles, it will be shown here. Enter the trade credit, actual cash value, payoff amount, and mileage. Click Save. The trade credit and payoff will be shown in the main tab. If there is a service contract, click the service contract tab. Then click Add Service Contract. Click the service contract to apply to this deal. Click Save, and the information will be reflected in the main tab. If there is insurance for this vehicle, click the Insurance tab. Enter the insurance information for this deal. If the dealership is selling insurance, click Vehicle Insurance Details, then enter the information. To set the gap, click the Gap tab. Click the three dots to select a gap company that has been set up. Enter the phone number, premium, and gap term. If there is a cost associated with the gap, click Costs, and enter the gap cost. On the main tab, if there are any manufacturer rebates, enter them here. If you would like the taxes and fees to be different from the taxes and fees template, click the three dots next to fees. Enter the fees specific to your state or province, and click the three dots next to taxes to enter the applicable taxes, if a tax table was not provided. Refer to the getting started video to go over taxes and fees templates. Under Financing, enter the information for the interest and payments. A summary of the contract is shown on the right. Once all of the information has been entered for this deal, click the Contract tab. Click Mark Contract as Final and Print, if you would like to immediately print forms for this deal. Click Mark Contract as Final and Close, if you would like to close the deal, but not print out forms at this time. A pop-up will appear to confirm the contract will be closed. Click OK, and the deal is now ready to have payments collected. To collect a payment, click Accounting in the left list, then click Accounting list. Click the deal you would like to collect a payment for. We will cover collecting payments in more detail shortly, feel free to skip to that chapter if you are looking specifically for how to collect payments. Setting up form packs in Desk Manager. We will cover buyer's guides in more detail shortly. Feel free to skip to that chapter if you are looking specifically for buyer's guides. First, click Settings. Next, click Form Packs under the Deal category. Click Add New, and you will then be prompted for a form pack name, state, and type, deal or inventory. Once the form pack is added, you will need to add forms to the created pack. Click the form pack you would like to add forms to. You will then be able to search and add forms to the form pack. How to create a buyer's guide template. Refer to the first walkthrough video for how to add forms to your forms library. First, click settings. This will take you to the settings page. In the inventory section, there is an option for Buyer's Guide Settings. Clicking on Buyer's Guide Settings will take you to the Buyer's Guide Settings page. Click Add New. Here you can enter a name for the template. Select the Buyer's Guide from the list of available forms. We have a range of Buyer's Guides to select from. Some are PDF, which can be printed on your laser or inkjet printer, or dot matrix specific, 
which can be printed on triplicate paper. Use the search bar if you're looking for a specific form, and check the box to the left of the form name. Once satisfied with the selected form, click Save to go back to the Buyer's Guide Settings page. At this point, you can determine what will go into your buyer's guide. Whether the template is designed for a vehicle as is, or whether it comes with a warranty. If there is a warranty, users can define how much the dealership will cover, on what parts, and for how long. Beneath, users can define the parts that are covered, and for how long the coverage lasts. Current buyer's guides have a duration of warranty section, along with disclosing any other warranties that may be applied to this vehicle. Click Save to exit the page. Buyer's guides can be printed at any time from within the vehicle screen. Print the form, and preview the results. Next, we will go over how to collect deal payments in Desk Manager. Collections are handled in the Accounting section of Desk Manager. Click Accounting on the left, then click Accounting List. You will be presented with a list of sold deals that are awaiting collection. The Accounting List will show details about the outstanding balances. From here you can see a summary of each deal, including the due amount, due date, as well as other useful information, depending on the type of deal. For a cash deal you will see the least amount of information. For a retail finance deal you will see more information, and for a buy here pay here deal you will see the most information. Click the deal to view the account summary. Depending on if the deal is financed, there will be two buttons, collect payment, for buyer payments, and lender payment, for payments from the bank or finance company. In buy here pay here and cash deals, only collect payment will show, since the money is coming from the buyer, directly to the dealership. For this example, we will click Collect Payment, however they work the same way. Here, you will be shown information on pending payments. Below that, select the amount you would like to collect from the pending payments, by clicking on the paper icon next to the amount. You may also manually enter the amount you would like to allocate in the payment section. You may optionally enter a reference number, which can be used for information regarding the payment type such as using it for a check number, when a customer is paying by check. Enter any notes that are associated with this specific payment. By default, Desk Manager will automatically calculate the allocation for the payment. However, you may change this by entering the amount to allocate to principal, interest, etc. If you want to reset the changes made to allocations, click Reset Allocation. Next, check whether you want to email a receipt, print a receipt, or both. Click Apply once you are satisfied with the information entered, and the payment will be collected for this deal. If this client is paying with a credit card, where the dealership is collecting by using an online service, click Online Payment. This will open your payment processor that was set up with your dealership. First, select whether the customer is paying with a credit or debit card. Next, enter the customer's billing information. To charge the customer through online payments, click Card Not Present. This will open a pop-up where you may enter the customer's credit card information. Once the information is entered, click Submit to charge the customer. If the charge was successful, a window will pop up to confirm the transaction. The next time you collect a payment for this customer, the card that was used will be saved for future use, or you can add a new payment type. Desk Manager tracks different information, based on the payment processor that is set up with your dealership. For more information, visit the link in the description. Or visit our help site at help.automanager.com. Next, we will go over commissions. The initial setup for commissions takes place inside the individual user settings. First, click the user to set up their commission. Then click the commission tab. Click add new then select the user role for this commission. You can add as many roles as are necessary for all the activity this user may be involved in. If the user has different roles, they may have different setups for each of those roles. Next, enter the rate type. You may select percentage or flat. When selecting percentage, enter the percentage of commission for this user when they select this role. 
When selecting flat, enter the flat rate for this user's commission in the field to the right. Now, when this user selects a role for his commission, the associated commission settings will be automatically applied in the deal. In some cases, the commission may need to be changed in a specific deal. For example, when you select the rep role for a user in their commission setup, they are set to receive a percentage for the commission. However, for this deal, the rep is given a higher percentage or higher flat amount. Here you can enter in the commissions for this deal manually. If you would like to add other commission to this deal for additional users, click Add Commission. Select the user role, then select the user. Enter the commission information, then click Save. If you would like to delete a commission that was added, click the trash icon for the commission you'd like to delete. Commissions also include print options for vouchers. You can select to print the voucher with or without profit. Desk Manager has a number of predefined reports available. To start out, click Settings. Reports and charts are divided into several sections. In this example, we will look at Inventory Report. There are tabs at the top for Library Reports and Reports for the profile you are logged into. Your profile's reports and charts will start out empty at first. You create a new report or chart by clicking the New Report or New Chart buttons. However, we recommend starting with a library report or chart and customizing it to suit your needs. Access the library reports and charts by clicking Library Reports. You will see a list of reports with a brief description for each. Click Preview to preview any report. Clicking Add will allow you to add the report to your profile's reports and customize it to your liking. First, give your report or chart a name and description. Next, Select to whom this report will be available. Your choices are to make it available to everyone in the company, make it available only to users in a certain role, or make it only available to yourself. Click Submit to continue. The name, description, and scope can all be edited after a report has been created. We will cover customizing reports momentarily. Once a report has been saved, it is accessible under its respective section of the program. In our case, we can click Reports and Charts under Inventory. Open your desired report by clicking on the report name. Any report can be exported by clicking Export, and then selecting your desired format. You can print your report by clicking the Print icon at the top. Clicking the name of the report at the top will give an explanation of what the report is showing. Changes to the filters can be temporarily applied to the report under the Modify Filter section. To permanently customize a report, navigate back to Settings, then select the appropriate section of the program. In our example, we will go back to Inventory. Click Customize on any report or chart you would like to edit. You can also click Copy to create a new copy of the report or chart. In this example, we will create a copy of our available inventory report and customize it to show vehicles purchased last month that are still available. Clicking Copy will bring us back to the Customize Report page. Be sure to update the name, description, and scope of your new report or chart. Filters are the criteria that determine the information displayed on the report or chart. The available inventory report with which we started had the filters set to show any vehicle where the status is not equal to sold. Add an additional criterion to the report by clicking Add Rule. For our new criterion, we can select inventory date between and select the date range. If you know you're going to be running the same report regularly, it is recommended to set a dynamic date range. Instead of selecting between, we will select dynamic date range and select last month. The and or operator will also determine the results of the report. In the current example, the results of the report will only show unsold vehicles that were purchased last month. If we were to change the operator to, or, the results of the report would change. The report would show all currently unsold vehicles. It would also include all vehicles purchased last month, including sold vehicles. In our example, we want both conditions to be met, so we will switch the operator back to, end. The Return Data section will allow you to select what data is displayed on the report, and the order it is displayed. 
The selected fields section contains the fields that will appear on your report. Drag them in the order you would like on your report. Fields can be removed by dragging them to the available fields section. The search box at the top can help you find fields in either section. You can drag and drop fields from the available fields section to add them to the report. Click the cog icon to sort the report by your desired field.